Recently, here at the school, I had to do a demonstration of uh, some larger grip gear and, and lighting tools, and I wanted to photograph a motorcycle. And uh, I went from not really knowing anybody in town with a motorcycle to meeting a guy who had about a hundred of them. And uh, we went and visited him, and I picked out a bike that I thought was really interesting, uh, which was this 1927 Henderson. He says apparently this thing could get up to 100 miles an hour, which I thought was pretty impressive for such an old bike. We had access to a warehouse space and we brought this bike in and uh, demonstrated for the students how I'd photograph something like this, uh, sort of in the time that we had. And uh, we lit up the bike and we lit up the background and uh, let me show you sort of my workflow with Capture One Pro and Photoshop and, and what I did with this particular product. So you can see here that uh, in Capture One Pro, I, I went ahead and as I kind of dialed in my general base sort of hero exposure of uh, the bike, um, sort of getting most of the aspects of the lighting that I wanted, I knew I would be getting some other additional plates as I went um, to sort of Photoshop together the, the perfect shot. And uh, in this scenario, we had a scenario where we had a 12 foot silk overhead and uh, you could see that some of the the lighting equipment was in the shot but I'm not too worried about it because I knew we'd be getting a capture without some of that. You can see that there's some foam core in the foreground that's helped sort of lighting up portions of the bike. But th this shot here, uh, this uh, 040, I, in my workflow I tend to put a little X on my base hero shot and that way if for whatever reason my color or star tagging gets uh, lost in the mix between machines uh, for, for any reason at all. Uh, at least I know which of my files I'm considering sort of like that hero shot. Um, and from there I would begin taking different uh, other exposures. I had this other one from earlier that had other little bits of light that I was sort of liking and I knew I would take some of these little bits of uh, specular highlight uh, later and so I named that file and then I have this one that had uh, sort of this you know smoke going on and uh, I tagged that one, and I have this one that I'd lit up to get some brighter lighting on the uh, tires themselves. And then I have this shot here where I was getting kind of a, a sexier sort of highlight on the tank itself. Uh, this shot that I grabbed mainly with you know some of the foam core out of the foreground, and uh, this one I brought in in order to th this bike's light wasn't working, so I knew I would be turning the light on in, in post-production anyhow. Um, and that's, that's generally the, the, the files that I had to start with. And, you know, there isn't, there's no work that's been done on any of these files. Uh, you know, something like this I would, I would probably take and, you know, brighten up a little ways. Um, you know, pump up some contrast and some saturation. I would take a look at my, you know, shadow tones and maybe get a little bit of high dynamic range in there and anywhere that I felt, you know, might need a little bit of highlight. Uh, reduction I would probably do that and then you know working with you know some of the color and tweaking some of the color around you know kind of warming up the shot and what's great about Capture One here is I can uh, hold shift and I can select all these shots and hold a command and, and get this last one here and whatever maneuvers I'm making here I can apply them to the bulk of the shot so I can uh, hold the shift key here and set and apply all of these together and it takes all of those settings that I just set and applies them to all the other shots which is nice uh, which would be kind of what I'd be wanting to do. Now in a workflow where I'm working with more than one computer uh, if I were to take these Canon CR2 files and pick them up and move them to another Capture One Pro none of that work that I just did would be taken with it. But if I, say, was working on set and I was doing some of these moves of exposure and tone and color, and I wanted some of that work to be appended to that file, I can actually come here to my browser and I can choose this item here called Pack as EIP. And EIP is sort of like the Lightroom's DNG file where it takes the sidecar metadata file of your settings and your, your metadata, your IPTC and your EXIF data, and, and basically burns it into the file for you. So I can pack it as EIP, and it's a proprietary file to Phase One's Capture One. I'm then able to take these files, I can put them on a thumb drive, bring them to another computer altogether, and load them into Capture One, and I would have all these same settings over here, all my metadata would be in existence, it would live there, 
Um, and that's a feature that I very much, very much like about the program. From here, I process the files out as high res TIFFs or PSD files. And I bring it into Photoshop and I begin layering this together. You can see here what we're looking at down here. I'll pull my layers up so we can see them. And I'll even expand my, my layers so that we can really see what's going on here. There we go. That looks good. So here's my, my base background, the one that I tagged with the X down here at the bottom of my layer stack. And you can see here that I've blended in now the, the file that I had identified as having the best of the smoke shots that I had gotten. And you can see here I have a, a file. This is the one where I brought a Profoto B1X over to the light. This particular motorcycle's light is not functioning. So I, wanted to, I knew I'd, I would be turning this thing on in Photoshop. So I brought a strobe right over to it and I just shot it right into the, the motorcycle headlight and that lit it right up and I'm able to then take that information and blend it with a layer mask uh, in Photoshop into the shot. And you can see that I've got this shot here that's mostly just for cleaning this information up out of my foreground and uh, so I blended that in, got a cleaner floor in the foreground and I've got this one here that's my sort of sexier lighting on the tank and so I blend that into the shot. I've got these shots here that are for the tires themselves. You can see here that's the foreground tire. And then I warm it up here with this uh, clipping mask of this curve here. And then I've got this one in the back here that's the tire in the back. Just kind of brightening it up a little bit and warming it up as well with uh, a curve. And then I've got this one that I had identified as having some nice little bits to it. So I can bring those little bits in. I liked the highlight on the front of the tire, some of this lighting on the front of the engine and on this horn up here. And then I get into doing some cloning and I get into doing some more cloning. I'm expanding my canvas upward and using some content aware to fill in some of the gaps. And from there, I had a capture where I was really liking the lighting here on the front fender, kind of a denser, more contrasty lighting. A uh, nice tone. So I bring that in as well. And you can see here, I also bring in, there's, I had a capture where I had a little bit of a specular highlight on the front fender of this motorcycle, which I thought was pretty cool. So I went ahead and uh, brought some of that in, accentuated it a little bit. And from there, I started taking a look at this kind of grungy toolbox here and went ahead and cleaned that up in Photoshop and, uh, you know, applied some overall color and tone. You can see that this one here is this, this tank here where I've brightened it up and made it look nicer. The chain guard, uh, just in the time that we had in this warehouse during this lesson, uh, you know, there was only so many things I could do, but I later went in with Photoshop and created sort of my own highlight here on the chain guard and uh, brightened it up, cleaned it up, and blended it to some of the, the texture of that actual chain guard. And then from there, I begin to create the actual light beam that's coming off of the headlight and adding in some little, little flares and maybe a little lens flare, some kind of overall brightening here to the shot. And from there, I did a little bit of cloning work uh, on the background, kind of blend that together. And I was kind of liking a little bit more of the subtle smoke in the background there. And in the end, I go ahead and I, I add in a high pass filter on top of it, which kind of gives it just a little bit of an extra bit of sort of edgy sharpening to the whole thing. And uh, when all is said and done, I end up with a 2.22 gigabyte file, a uh, pretty big layered file. And I save that out in my layered folder. And when I'm done, I flatten the whole thing down to a new hero file and uh, create my JPEGs from there. And, uh, and and that's, you know, essentially my process with this uh, 1927 Henderson motorcycle using Capture One Pro and Adobe Photoshop.